Hello dear students, welcome back. Today's lesson is about relative clauses. We will be examining relative clauses, why do we use them, how do we use them, uh, etc. Actually, again, we have the same uh, structure, same meaning and sentence structure in Turkish as well. Uh, we use relative clause in order to uh, unite two sentences that have one uh, feature of speech in common. For example, uh, my sister uh, is a student. My sister is 19. Now, as you can see, these are two different uh, full main sentences. I'm talking about two sentences here. But what they ha have in common is that uh, the subject. It doesn't have to be subject, it can be object uh, or defining a adjective or adverb maybe, uh, but if we have something common, a feature of speech in common in two sentences, I want to make one sentence uh, and unify them. I'm going to make a sentence where I use only one of the same thing, same feature of speech. For example, my sister who is a student is 19. Like this, I united the sentences and it can be easier uh, to build one sentence instead of two different sentences and we don't have to say the same thing, we don't have to repeat the same thing again. So, why do we use it? So, we said unite two sentences that have one uh, feature of speech in common. What else it can be to give extra information or to describe something. This is why we use a relative close. And I have, we have relative pronouns that actually helps us <coughs> to build our sentences in relative clauses, to unite two sentences that have one uh, feature of speech in common, to unify them, we use relative pronouns. to connect them we use relative pronouns which are who that which when 
whose and um, where. I use these pronouns to make right relative uh, sentences, relative close sentences. And when you look at the actual sentence structure in here, I have two sentences. One is relative close and one is the main close. My sister who is a student. Now this is my subject, obviously. Who is a student? Now in here I am defining uh, the subject. I am defining my sister. So I can uh, hear this is relative close we can say and this is actually my main close. The main sentence, the uh, actual sentence here is actually my sister is 19. And here I give uh, like a small sentence and extra information to describe something better, I use relative close. And in here, uh, in the full sentence, we said that this is subject and this is a verb. Uh, and the position of this relative close in the main sentence is an adjective because this defines the subject. And if we look inside who is a student, I can see that this is my verb and this is the object and my relative pronoun. So let's continue with here. Uh, we talked that we have main clothes and relative clothes. We will be careful with them. And we will be careful also about how do we use and where do we use these relative pronouns. Now obviously I use who to define person, people. That uh, to de uh, describe, define, it can be person, it can be animal, it can be object. I use that to define person, animal or object, which I use which to define uh, objects, and animals. Actually most of the time that and which uh, can be confusing for students but the difference is uh, I can define people using that but I cannot define uh, people using which. When I we define time and whose we define a possessive pronouns uh, like my, your, his, and I define places with where. This is really important because uh, it is really important to choose the right relative pronoun in order to m create a meaningful sentence using relative clothes. Let's start giving examples. Let's start with who.
first I will write uh, two different two um, sentences that are completely main clauses that are not related, they are not together. For example, Sula is my sister. Sula is uh, a teacher. Now, in order to rewrite this sentence in relative clause, using relative clause, I have to find the the same feature of uh, speech. What is one thing in common here? Sula and again I can see the same subject in the second sentence. So I can say Sula who is my sister is a teacher. Now here actually what is Im more important that you have to put relative pronoun right after what you are defining, what you are uh, describing, giving extra information about, you have to put relative pronoun right after what you are describing. And uh, I put the first sentence here. Why? Uh, can it be this one? It, her being a teacher, the first, uh, not the first, the relative close sentence in the sentence. Uh, it can be, it depends on what I am trying to focus on, what I'm trying to draw focus on. That's why uh, I, I could say, Sula, who is a teacher, is my sister. Now here again I put my relative pro pronoun right after the thing that I am giving extra information or describing uh, right after it. This time I put the second sentence uh, in my relative close sentence and they are both okay, they are both correct, but uh, the meaning, the actually focus uh, of the sentences are different. In the first sentence, I am trying to emphasize that Sula is a teacher. The main goal of the sentence and here, uh, the actual, the thing that I want to draw focus on, draw attention on, is that her being my sister, she is my sister. Uh, so, after saying that, we can um, predict, we can say that in relative close, As we said on the first page, as we said the first thing, it was, it gives extra information or describes something, but it is not the focus of the sentence. It is just like uh, in Turkish we say yan cümle, it is the same thing. It gives extra information or describes extra things. So uh, let's have a look at here. 
In this sentence, Sıla, who is my sister. Sıla is subject, is a teacher. This is the main verb of the main clause, verb of the main clause, which makes it uh, the actual verb of the sentence. Uh, so looking at here, who is my sister, an extra information, I can say that this is obviously relative close, but something that defines the subject. So this is an adjective used as an adjective here, and this is the object of my main clause. So actually the main clause in this sentence is Sla is a teacher. And looking at here, Sla who is a teacher is my sister. Main clause here is Sla is my sister. Sla again is subject of the main clause, also the relative clause is subject. Uh, is in here is verb in main clause, the verb of the whole sentence. Uh, and in here again I see a relative clause, yan cümle. Uh, it describes the subject, so it is used as adjective in this sentence. My best friend My best friend uh, plays volleyball. She is uh, beautiful. Okay, again, uh, we said that the first thing I will look at uh, is that the common thing that a common feature of speech in these two sentences. It is obviously my best friend and in second sentence it's the she refers to my best friend. So I will start writing my sentence with my best friend. My relative pronoun who plays volleyball is beautiful. I put my relative pronoun right after the subject. The subject of this sentence is my best friend and right after that uh, it gets relative pronoun. Then I see verb uh, here I see relative close. Then I see the main verb, verb of my main close. Uh, so I can say that this is the subject of uh, both relative close and main close. Relative close again defines the subject here, so it is an adject adjective in this sentence. And if I wanted to put uh, the second sentence in the beginning, if I use the second sentence as relative close while uniting the two sentences, it would draw the attention to uh, that she plays volleyball. My best friend, who is beautiful, plays volleyball. In this sentence, the focus was on that she is beautiful. Now in this one, 
the focus is on that she plays volleyball. So uh, the focus of the sentence is based on the main close verb. Again, I put my relative pronoun right after the subject. This is the relative clause that describes or gives extra information. And again, works as an adjective, used as an adjective in this example. The man is wearing a yellow shirt. He is a worker. The common feature of speech in these two sentences is the man. He in this sentence refers to the man and I will start writing my relative closed sentence with the man and I will put who which is my relative pronoun in the sentence right after it who is wearing a yellow shirt is a worker. In this sentence, my focus is that the man is a worker. The main purpose of this sentence is to tell uh, that he is a worker. And the fact that he is wearing a yellow shirt is an extra information or to describe him. And if I would say the man who is a worker is wearing yellow shirts, then the main focus of my sentence would be that he is wearing a yellow shirt. And the relative clause, which is that he is a worker, would be an extra information or to describe. And by the way, I don't know if you have noticed it, but when we use the uh, feature of speech that is common in two sentences and when we use the relative pronoun, the uh, appropriate pronoun, relative pronoun after it, I don't mention it the second time. I don't mention it again uh, after using it with relative pronoun because I don't necessarily have to. Brenda lives in Dubai. She will visit me next week. Again, Brenda, the subject of these two sentences, is same. That's why I will be using who. If I want to focus on um, that she'll visit me, then I will put it in the main clause. And inside the relative clause will be the extra information. I don't write uh, Brenda again. I want
wanted to draw attention that she will visit me next week and I wanted to give extra information as she lives in Dubai. That's why I put it in the main clothes and put this one in relative clothes. I could do the otherwise who will visit me next week lives in Dubai. Then uh, our main clause would be our focus of the sentence would be that she lives in Dubai and the extra information in relative close it would be that she will visit me next week. Okay, one more example then we will start giving an example with which, using which. I share is my employer she uh, used to be a nurse again our subjects are the same in the two sentences so I will unite them in one sentence using relative pronoun which is who is my employer used to be a nurse or if I want to focus on that she is my employer I would write it like this I say who used to be a nurse is my employer. I could also write it like that. Uh, continuing with which, we said that we use which with objects and animals. Instagram is a social media site. It is popular among it is popular among young people. Now, the common feature of speech in these two sentences is Instagram, which is actually, again, the subject of the sentence. It, in the sentence, refers to Instagram. I will start my sentence with Instagram. It is not something alive, I'm talking about an object, that's why I use which, but I could also use that in the sentence, it's okay. Instagram, which is a social media site, is popular among young people. Instagram is my subject. I used which, but in this example I could also use that, they are both correct, is a social media site is popular among young people. Now, here in this sentence, my uh, main clause is here. Instagram 
is a popular is popular among young people. Here, which is a social media site, is relative close. You can count this as one in main close, but then go in detail on its own. This is main close and this is relative close. Or I could do the opposite. Instagram is popular, sorry, which is among young people is a social media site. Then the main clause would be that Instagram being a social media site and that would make my main clause in this sentence and which is popular among young people would be relative close, which defines the subject here, gives extra information. Okay. London Bridge is a language school. It has well educated teachers. Here in this example, I am talking about a subject that is common, that is same in the two sentences. So I will start with London Bridge and uh, putting on the right relative pronoun. It can be which or that in this example again because I'm talking about an object not a people which uh, or that is a language school has well educated teachers I made here the main clothes and the focus of my sentence, which makes here the relative clothes that defines the subject or I could do the reverse. London Bridge, which has or that has well educated teachers, is a language school. Here, I made uh, that well-educated teachers that the London Bridge has well-educated teachers. I made here the main clothes and my focus of the sentence. The left is next 
to the reception desk. It is out of order. Here, the common uh, feature of speech in both sentences is the lift. So I will start with it and unite the two sentences using the right uh, relative pronoun. The lift, which is next to the reception, or again, I could use that here also because I'm talking about an object, the lift, to the reception is out of order. My subject, by the way, don't uh, confuse this. When I said that the lift is an object, I'm not talking about the subject of the sentence. I'm talking about the lift word itself is an object, not the object of the sentence. That or which is next to the reception is out of order. What I'm actually trying to tell, uh, what I'm actually trying to give information about this sentence, using this sentence, is that the lift is out of order. This is my main clause and the elevator being next to the reception is my extra information or describing not the focus or the attention of the sentence. Here is my uh, relative clause and here is my main clause. Again, I could uh, do it in the other way and draw focus to the next sentence. The lift, which is out of order, is next to the reception. Now here, uh, I did uh, change the places of the relative clause and main clause and draw attention to the second sentence actually. Uh, the lift being next to the reception now is my main clause and the focus of my sentence. Subject, of course, is same. I could again use that or which they are both correct. Is out of order here. My relative clause, it gives extra information or describe the subject, which makes it um, works like a adjective in this sentence. And one more example using which Spanish is a beautiful language it is hard to learn the common feature of speech in these two sentences is Spanish it in the second sentence refers to Spanish in the first sentence and I will unite them Spanish which or that right after the uh, name that I'm describing I'm defining which is 
a beautiful language is hard to learn. This is my main clothes. Focus of the subject of the subject sentence. Uh, and here is my extra information or defining a relative clause, which is, which works uh, like an adjective in this sentence. Or I could do the otherwise Spanish, which is hard to learn is a beautiful language. This time I drew attention to Spanish being a beautiful language. This time this is my main clothes and focus of my sentence. This time, the extra information or uh, describing the subject it, uh, is in that Spanish being a hard language to learn. Again, an adject works like an adjective in this example. We said that this is relative close of the sentence. And now uh, we will give examples using where this relative pronoun. We said that we use this particular relative pronoun to define places. This is important. Uh, for example, we stayed at a hotel. Uh, it had beautiful view. <clears throat> I am talking about doing something at somewhere, which uh, defines actually place. We stayed at a hotel, it had beautiful view. The common feature of speech in these two sentences is hotel. The it in the sentence refers to a hotel. I am going to say the hotel where we stayed had beautiful view. There are some things that you should be careful with when you're using where as relative pronoun. Uh, I sat the hotel and right after that the appropriate relative pronoun comes, which is where in this situation. We state, I don't put at. I omit the at because where gives that meaning. Had a beautiful view. So, the relative close, the extra information part is here, where we state. It describes or gives extra information about the subject that it refers to, that it defines. Uh, so it works also as an adjective and this is 
the main clothes. The hotel, blah, 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 extra information, had beautiful view. In this particular exercise, we cannot write it like the hotel where had beautiful view, uh, we state, we cannot do such thing because I am giving the place meaning in the first sentence, so I have to take here and use it with relative clause. I cannot use here, I cannot put here after where. My cousin lives in Los Angeles. Los Angeles is a beautiful city. Here, the common feature of speech in these two sentences is Los Angeles. In the first sentence, it is used as, in the first sentence, it is used as a place. And in the second sentence, it is not used as place. It is used as an object, as a city, as a uh, object. In the second sentence, there is not a place meaning. That's why, that is the reason why I cannot uh, switch the places of the sentences in this example also. Because in the second sentence, this, it's in the sentence, doesn't give the meaning of a place. It only gives the meaning of a hotel. And hotel on its own doesn't give you a meaning of place. I have to say at hotel, in hotel, or etc. Uh, in the living room, whatever. But uh, other than that, if you don't use uh, prepositions like at, in, uh, then it doesn't give the meaning of place. So uh, that is the reason why we cannot switch the places of the sentences because uh, one of them doesn't give the meaning of place. So I will write my cousin lives in, uh, or I can say Los Angeles where my cousin lives is a beautiful city. Los Angeles, where my cousin lives, here gives the meaning of a place uh, happening something at somewhere, but in the second one, it defines Los Angeles on its own. It uh, doesn't give a place meaning. And if even I wanted to switch places, it would be like this. My cousin lives in uh, Los Angeles, which is a beautiful city. If I switched the places, it couldn't be uh, where as relative pronoun. The parade will take place in the street. The street 
is white. Now, just as we talked, I can see a place preposition. Uh, so it gives me the meaning of a place in the first sentence, but in the second sentence, the, uh, the street doesn't give a, the meaning of a place. Uh, it defines the street on its own as a street. I cannot see at in whatever. So I can do it like, the street where the parade will take place is white. Don't forget to uh, use where in the correct sentence, the sentence that gives the meaning of a place, used as a place. Street in the first sentence used as a place, but in the second sentence it's like an object, not a place, definitely. Uh, and if I wanted to switch places, I couldn't use where. Instead, like in the last example, the street which is wide, uh, the parade will take place in. And don't forget to omit at or uh, in. Whatever gives the meaning of a use of a place in the sentence, don't forget to omit uh, do reduction of that proposition. We also have when. We said that it defines time. And actually, the usage of this relative pronoun is similar to where. For example, Sunday is a day. We go hiking on Sunday. In the first sentence, I am describing a word, not a time. But in the second sentence, I am describing, I am talking about a time. So, I can say, Sunday when we go hiking is a day. If I wanted to use it with here, it wouldn't be when, because in the first sentence, uh, there is not, there's not something that gives us the meaning of time. So it will be like this, Sunday, which is a day, we go hiking on. And if I wanted to switch places, it would be like this. Do you remember the day we got married? This time, in this example, I gave you the uh, relative closed sentence example on its own. Let's examine this. Do you remember the day we got married? Now, 
the relative closed part is actually here. I am defining the day. Uh, that day is the day we got married. There are so many more examples like this. That book has so many pages. I don't know how to finish it. The same thing in these two sentences is that book. I don't know how to finish it. It, in the second sentence, refers to that book. Uh, so, I will start with the subject, that book which has so many pages. I don't know how to finish. Or I could say, I don't know how to finish the book that has so many pages or I could use which in here or I could say which. That's it for today guys. I hope you understood uh, and enjoyed our lesson. We will be continuing the same subject, same title, relative clauses on our next lesson. So don't forget to review and study. Uh, take care of yourselves. See you later.